So where we last left off, we had a, a situation where we were barely able to like kind of um, do some of this sort of stuff, essentially. We basically figured out how we could just sort of set a position with the index and we were able to basically get the, you know, integer that was here and put a value here. And then when we started the game, it was going to be at that particular value. Right. And that was it. What I've got is this, uh, I, I decided to just sort of, you know, kind of backtrack myself to where we last left off at our video uh, and then show you how we get to where we are uh, actually working with this now, at least to some extent. Okay. So what did I do? So the first thing to mention is that, remember how we were looking at a metronome thing and we were thinking that we could take, uh, you know, a little bit beat number from the integer and somehow send the integer over to our other, you know, our, our blueprint basically. <clears throat> and the answer is no, you can't do that. Um, so that's a little disappointing but it is also maybe perhaps not surprising given the nature of this sort of general, um, you know, experiment that we're kind of doing. You know, you're always going to run into dead ends. You're always going to run into things you can't do, stuff like that, right? So, uh, you know, a little bit of checking on the forums and asking questions and stuff like that. And I found out about a system that was available called Quartz, okay? So Quartz is actually a system that is uh, somewhat predating certainly pre predating uh, most of Metasounds. Um, and um, it came out actually all the way back in the 4.26 days. So what, what Quartz is, is basically this ability to create very accurate timers, okay? Very accurate timing objects, okay? And so uh, what I wanted to do was kind of backtrack and just show you how I was able to, to do this. So essentially what I did was I've abandoned the entire concept of using the metronome, at least in, in, the, in the short term anyway. We'll eventually use Metasound to, to generate our sounds that we want to have play, f you know, for our things. But for now, we're just doing simple things. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to create a Metasounds clock and then we're going to basically do all the things we have to do. And it is a complex procedure for people who are real basics to, to Unreal Blueprints. And again, this is not a tutorial. So please do not regard my way of doing it as the best way or the only way or anything like that. It's probably, in many respects, probably one of the least efficient ways. But we'll see what happens. Okay? So <clears throat> here we go. Uh, so I actually just created a, a copy of our previous blueprint so we could start from the point that we were just at in our last, our last movie, uh, our last uh, video that we did. So what we ended up doing was actually creating this very complex series of things. So we'll actually go through the whole affair, okay? For this, what we want to do is create a clock. And eventually, what we eventually want to do is end up with an integer that goes into this get field. So that goes to the row and then gets that thing. And then basically sticks it at actor location. And that will make this thing move to those locations. All right. So let's just try this. So the first thing we want to do is maybe call the quartz. Yeah. Now, this is the thing about the blueprints type stuff that, you know, I have to deal with as far as the search situation. So basically go, you go here and it says place a new node. And now what happens is that whenever you're dragging uh, a thing from a blueprint, essentially what you're doing is you're telling this subsystem what functions under this subsystem that it, you want to basically do. Okay. So that's the, it's a little bit weird. Um, but you know, you just have to get used to it basically. So the idea is that, um, Rather than creating an object that is, yeah, you create the the the, the, the subsystem, and then you can create create the functions that go with the subsystem um, here, and that is create new clock. Now those functions will be here because this is a, an action specifically for the quartz uh, subsystem. So because we're dragging it there, it relates to the quartz subsystem. So now create new clock, and we're we're here. And I'll probably actually put this a little higher up because that's where I was before. I had lots of stuff to have to deal with actually. So, and we're gonna take out this exec for right now. This execute, ex, exec means in this case, execute. So we're gonna break that link temporarily. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to tell it to have a couple of different settings. There's gonna be make clock quartz, make quartz clock settings. Uh, that's what you're looking for. So that's going to go in settings here. 
So you go here and you can just say make quartz clock settings. There you go. And then that hooks it up. Again, these are all kind of inputs into the clock, right? That's the idea. That's that's the concept that's coming up as far as the flow is concerned, right? So the deal is that. And then we are going to do the same thing here. I think this is going to be set time signature. We're going to just drag it from time signature. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, again, not too many other options. What's nice is when you don't have too many options, then you, you don't have to worry too much. So you just drag the pin off and you can see, oh, look at this, make quartz time signature, right? It's right there, it's right available, so that kind of thing. So the idea is that, you know, you can set the beats to the number of beats to however many you want. You can set the beat type to quarter note, to eighth notes, to 16th, all the way up to 32nd notes. And 32nd note is actually the tick. It's the shortest timing range that you have technically in Unreal. All right, so this is fine for right now. Actually, in my case, I'm probably gonna wanna have this be 16 beats because I have 16 spots and this is my beat type and that's what I'm gonna be doing. All right, so now that we've got all the inputs into our creating new clock, now we have to come from the outputs. Oh, the other thing that's really, really important to mention. Yes, very, very important to mention actually, this, this field right here. So the deal in uh, this particular situation is we're going to drag this into here and we're gonna click on, and I'll use my right mouse button and move things over a little bit. Okay, so we see what's going on. And you see we have the clock name. So right now, naming the clock is going to be absolutely super important because you're needing to have a handle for this object and you need to name your clocks. Every single clock you definitely have to name. Uh, very, very important idea. So you can just name your clock and that's gonna basically be its handle effectively. And so you can call this, you know, whatever you want. I'm gonna call it main clock. And you could say main tempo or whatever you wanna call it for your, for your game situation. But that's gonna be very important. Um, and <clears throat> so that's gonna be very important information. So they say, this is my master clock here. And the reason why is because if we want to you will you will see why it's important basically because at some point what we have to do we cannot actually just like hook the output of this clock directly into what we're doing we have to actually kind of create what's called a delegate and then basically subscribe to the delegate so essentially what we did is we're trying to do is we're basically saying here's the clock and we might want to make events or get events off the clock but in order to get events, we have to sort of subscribe to it. And in order to be subscribed to it, you have to know what the name of the clock is you want to subscribe to. Essentially, it's like a variable. So we're just defining a variable. Remember, this would be a variable like new clock, you know, or something like that. Create new clock and then target is quartz or whatever. And the idea is that it's gonna have to have a variable. That's what you're basically doing by creating the name for the clock, essentially, is creating a variable for it. Um, Okay, so we can hit the compile button. It's always a good idea to keep doing that on a pretty regular basis. And as long as you keep getting them greens, that's good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we're gonna pull this off and say, okay, well, what can we do with our execution action? And mind you, our event begin play can actually go straight into here. There are execute saying, okay, when we start the game, we're gonna create a new clock and we're gonna pull it out of here and say, what are we gonna do? In this case, uh, what what are we gonna do? <laughs> We're gonna say set beats per minute. Yep. So we can go to here and choose this set beats per minute. Set beats, come on. There it is, set beats per minute. So that goes to target self. Now what is ends up happening is you see this return value that's here, we can just plug that in right at the same time. If we wanted to, we could probably get it in another way as well, but but this is the most convenient way to basically make that happen. And here's our 60 beats per minute, basically, right? So we can make that more like 120 or whatever we want, you know? And you can even put this in as a separate variable. So you could actually put put a variable in here and, and deal with that if you wanted to. Now, once we've set our beats per minute, we want to try basically want to do the subscription because again, here's the thing. I cannot take this and plug it into that. Okay, I can't automatically do that. What I have to do is I have to create a subscription essentially to that. So now we're gonna say subscribe. And you can see, once you see that, now you say subscribe to all quantization events. 
you can subscribe to a particular quantization event. That is kind of what I want to do. And then I also want to be able to do is set which quantization event I want to subscribe to. Remember, again, you don't know this, but anyway, I know this because I'm a designer. <laughs> so the deal in this case is I'm going to have each layer be a very specific type of quantized event. So it's going to be a quarter note or an eighth note or an eighth note triplet or a quarter note triplet or a half note triplet or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter what. But the idea is that each layer is going to have its own independent rhythmic value, essentially, relative to the tempo, which is whatever the tempo is, basically. Uh, so I'm going to say subscribe to quantization event. So when you do that, you get this thing and it's going to say target itself. You can click clock handle and do that again. Or you can point this to a variable that would be the clock handle. That would be the one that you'd have. Uh, and then this is how you create a delegate. Okay, so here's the organization quantization boundary would be the bar. So these are the, the values you want. Now, do you want a bar or do you want more than a bar or whatever, I'll, you know, so you could probably create a custom version if you wanted to, but they can do bar or beat or 132nd or 16th or all the other things, the dotteds and the triplets, all kinds of cool variants, basically. Now, here's the deal. We need to send this to our thing in question. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to choose on quantization event. And now what we're actually doing is creating an event kind of similar to this play at the beginning of the game event sort of thing. And we can just create what the event is going to be. The event is going to be a, an event dispatcher. This is what I've seen from the videos that I've seen. Okay, so then you're going to say create event. And that's the event we want to create. So I'm basically making my own function. And you could say creating a ma matching function or a matching event. And I believe we created a matching event, not a function. Events and functions are kind of semi-similar, but I really don't know what the difference is between them. They're not identical. Anyway, I'm going to call it an event. Yeah, so it's called custom event. And you can now title it whatever you want to get. You know, say, um, get quantized beat. Okay, so that is now where we can get our values out of, which is the super most important thing that we want to deal with, okay? We can take our beat, remember it was 16.4, and we can dump it right into here. And then we can also take our exec pin, essentially, and dump it into set actor location. That is basically it. That's all we need to do. And then at that point, what ends up happening is, is it'll go to the beat, it'll play the thing. Now, one thing that's very important, we are, we are gonna need to do a little bit of something on here. Because here's the deal, the beat is gonna be going in musically significant values, which means it's gonna be going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? We need it to be obviously a little bit better than that because we need it to be at the beginning of our array. So what we need to do now is look for subtract because we need to subtract one operators subtract. That's what we're looking for. And in this case, we just want to say what the B is. And the idea is that we just simply want to subtract it to one. That's all. Just one value. And that way that when we hit the beginning of B, it will always be zero there. We just pass this over to here. And now what happens is get will then get the value we want. And as you can see, even though these are not, this isn't actually hooked up because we don't have an uh, exec pin over here that we can run it into. It's getting the quantized beat and that's the actual sort of function that we have going on, okay? So that will pretty much basically get us exactly what we want. So we get all of this information from the clock, we create the clock and then we create the event for the clock, and then we can basically, basically subscribe to that, this event by making an event here that subscribes to it, and we can create whatever custom name we want for it. It's always a good idea, because, you know, that's what, what you do. Essentially, a, an event is like a function, effectively. And then basically we use that to grab the beat amount, because again, with 16, we're gonna have like, you know, it'll be one through 16, we subtract one in order to get zero through 16, or zero through 15, I should say. Okay, so, now that we've done this, 
you can see, and the other thing we need to do, we need to make sure we need to compile it and it needs to make sure that it does compile. The same thing here with our other one, even though this one's really not running, it's not hooked up to anything. It's just a blank uh, playhead right now. But I wanted to, you know, show you kind of how this works essentially. So here we go, watch. There you go. So the journey has begun, basically. Uh, so we'll see you in the next one because we are definitely, I've gotten some good advice on how to be able to make this all work and how to be able to uh, subscribe to a particular quantized event so that when I change things, it will change that event. Um, and we'll see how well effective this is going to be, but we definitely want to be able to make it so that we can make multiple rows, have each of those rows, um, at least for this temporary thing, we want to make those uh, individual rows uh, potentially able to be um, changed in terms of rhythm. But we have other things we can work on in the meantime as well. So I'm only going to go as far as like figuring out if I can make a different quantized thing happen. Now, mind you what's happening right now, that metronome is not hooked up to this stuff at all. So that metronome has nothing to do with what you're seeing visually on the screen at all, right? It's just, just so you know that. That that metronome is completely independent. Um, I could I could put this at, you know, a million beats per minute and you can still hear this thing going dut, 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 at the same thing, okay? So just keep that in mind. Anyway, hope that helps you get your game audio on and we'll see you in the next one.